It's time for a Drummer Nation. Welcome to Drummer Nation. Welcome back. Welcome for the first time. Welcome everyone. This is the show where drummers come to talk about drums. I've been fortunate enough to have many great guests. I try to present well-known drummers, drummers who are great musicians that you may not know as well as I think you should, uh, world-class educators, and industry movers and shakers. I was happy to attend the GEN conference in New Orleans in January, the Jazz Education Network conference, and I uh, got some great interviews there. I kind of ran ahead of myself with interviews. That's why I'm going to weekly instead of bi-weekly. So I wanted to get this last uh, interview from the GEN convention with Rich Thompson to you. It should have been out earlier. I apologize for that. Rich is a teacher extraordinaire, player extraordinaire. He's been teaching at Eastman School of Music for a long time. So we've got some great educators if you look back through the history of the shows, and Rich is certainly another one of them. I try to get the titles of the shows from things that the artists say when we're talking to them. For this one, you might notice it's, uh, I can't read it. The best you can play is to be yourself. And I think that's really words of wisdom from Rich, and you'll find out more about him as the show goes on. We're adding new sponsors. For the next show, I hope to have the ad ready for the Stanton Moore Drum Academy and some other great sponsors. Speaking of sponsors, I'm also relying on the same thing that Beethoven and Mozart and many others did, which is patronage. There's a patronage site for this show that I will encourage you to go and sign up for, kind of like a NPR pledge, pledge drive. Only I won't hit you with it all the time. You can sign up for a dollar a month. I think the most expensive one is 10 bucks a month, and I'll put your name in the credits. So help me out there if you can. There's another thing I'd like you to do, and that is to sign up for our mailing list. The mailing list will come with a free download of an article I wrote on improving your social media skills for artists. And that's absolutely free, and then we'll keep you in the know on what's going on with Drummer Nation. So next up, Rich Thompson, after this word from our sponsors. I'm proud to now welcome Sabian Sibbles as an official sponsor of Drummer Nation. The former Crescent Vanguard series are now widely available as part of the legendary Sabian HH models. HH symbols are traditionally hand hammered into shape and sound by Sabian craftsmen. Each symbol receives between 2,000 and 4,000 hammer blows, resulting in increased musicality, tonal complexity, and unmatched sonic texture favored by drummers in the know for generations. Find out more about the Vanguard series and all other Sabian models at Sabian.com. Musician, designer, and award-winning innovator, Ron Danette relentlessly pursues quality of sound. Every Danette classic drum is crafted completely by hand, carefully assembled one at a time, and personally signed by Ron himself. The shell weights are tuned for optimal performance, giving each one inherent resonance, full range dynamics, and a pure rich tone. All Danette classic snare drums feature soft, contoured beds that are deep cut to eliminate snare buzz and accommodate the use of wider 42 strand snares. Compare a Danette with others in its class and you'll discover that the alternative is compromise. Well, I'm here once again at Jen in New Orleans 2017 with my buddy Rich Thompson. How are you, Rich? Good. Nice to see you. Great to see you. Rich uh, teaches at Eastman School of Music, is That's that the right. name of it? That's in right. In Rochester? Yes. One of the premier educational institutions. Well, we like to think so. I mean, uh, there are so many great uh, colleges and universities with great jazz departments now that were started uh, 20, 30 years ago, but uh, we're very fortunate to have a great faculty and uh, a great student body, talented young people. And you've been there a couple of years. 20 years now. Way to keep a gig. You must be doing something great. Well, you try to, uh, you know, massage your personal relationships with your mm -hmm. faculty members as much as you 
as you do with your students and just the big thing is just to try to be supportive just like when you're playing the drums as opposed to uh, always trying to put yourself in the spotlight you don't really need to do that when you've got good people around you just try to make music and make relationships. Now you're here to play as well as being an educator. You, you played last night? That's right. Well we played Wednesday night on the kickoff concert in the Empire Ballroom. We played the music of Marty Page and David Page was there and he helped set up this whole thing along with uh, our jazz chair at Eastman, Jeff Campbell. And For people who may not know, Marty Page was a great big band, LA composer, arranger, uh, right, right. Many uh, notable albums from all kinds of people. David Page is his son. David Page is his son. Who from had, Toto. From Toto. Absolutely. A really successful rock group in the 70s and early 80s. So you were channeling Mel Lewis? He's on some of those. Couldn't help but channel some Mel Lewis. He's uh, such a favorite of so many of ours. Can't fault the guy for that. Now, how did you come up? Well, I was born in Kansas City. I like to say the birthplace of Charlie Parker. Indeed. But my dad worked for an oil company uh, and we moved around about every five years so I ended up in St. Louis, Texas, West Texas, going to the end of the Golden West Jazz Festival there when I was a young guy and then going to Oklahoma and attending the University of Oklahoma. But we always, there was a faction of us, there were about four of us guys, uh, had a little group called Oleo, and uh, the bass player was Len Seaton, who now teaches at North Texas State University. Mm -hmm. and, and we would go everywhere within about a 350 mile radius. In fact, even drove down to New Orleans to catch great jazz when we were in college. And so I guess we really wanted it. And then I ended up at Eastman for my masters, then went on the road with the Glenn Miller Orchestra, did you do that band? I did. I did that band too. Yeah, in 85. 85? I, I was there in 70 something or other. Who was the leader? Dick Gerhardt. Dick Gerhardt. So, Zoot. Zoot. Yep. Zoot was on the band when I was there, but he wasn't a leader yet. Well, we called him affectionately the Sandblaster from Lancaster. <laughs> he was from Lancaster, That's right. PA. But he was a really nice guy. And, he was. Uh, did that band, and then I went back to Rochester for a minute, and then moved to New York City, and uh, worked with several people in New York ended up playing the Basie Band in 96, Beautiful. in 97, and uh, then Eastman asked me to teach there. Well, let me ask you this, since you've been a big band guy, especially Basie, it was so stylistic, and also, I mean, I heard you do a Bill Evans tribute, where you oh, guys yeah. have transcribed every note from each instrument. We've done that. Uh, uh, that was at an IAJ in, in New York City, I think, mm -hmm. in 06. We did something in Long Beach in 02, where we had we had done a similar project with uh, the Ahmad Jamal Trio. But my question is this, there's such a disparity in styles between the Basie Band and Ahmad Jamal or Bill Evans. Well, I came up liking that trio thing and, and also when I thought about big bands, loving the Basie Band, always dreamed of playing on the Basie Band. And just, uh, I guess, kept dreaming it and my name got tossed around. And uh, by uh, several influential people, one of them, Byron Stripling, the trumpet mm -hmm. player, and I pl I've been playing in Byron's quartet for years, but most notably the last nine years I've been playing in his quartet, and we've been traveling all over the world and play the jazz cruises and play at Marion's in Bern, Switzerland quite a few times. He's a great trumpet player. Go all over the country. But I was asking how, I was trying to ask how stylistically, how you compensate for the Basie Band on one hand, Bill Evans Trio on the other. Well, I think they all swing mm -hmm. in their own way, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, you just, uh, I think if you come up in the history of, in the lineage of the music, that you don't try to pigeon your, pigeonhole yourself as one type of drummer. I think that you're just always reaching to play music, no matter which situation you find yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to play Bill Evans' music and, and to channel Paul Motion or any of the great drummers that he had on up through Joe LaBarbera. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going to play in a big band situation, you're just naturally thinking of all those great inspirational players like a, a, like a Sonny Payne or a Joe Jones or a Mel Lewis or any of those great big band drummers. And you're just trying to make music. I think that's it. So, you know, it's all jazz music. It, it, it's, it's, that's sort of... I wouldn't say pigeonhole, but it's all, there's a lot of different music can be made in jazz, and if the music informs how you play, you go with your gut, it should work, right? Well, absolutely, because uh, 
you can't ever play exactly what you hear on the record mm -hmm. if you're not being fed exactly what you heard on the record because that's not jazz but you can channel what you heard on those records mm -hmm. and try to make it feel as good as what you remember it felt like on those records and it's going to be you of course you can't you can't divorce yourself from yourself I, I noticed I've had the privilege, privilege of sitting down at a famous drummer's drums several times and uh, their sticks, right. their heads, their tubs, you know, cymbals. I can't get their sound. Yeah, I think it's, uh, that's something that young people often think of is, is if you buy the right equipment, and, and manufacturers want us to feel like that. You buy the right I was in the drums, gear business. You, you buy the right cymbals or sticks. Reed players try to do it with saxophonists, mm -hmm. mouthpiece makers. You're always going to play your, the best you're going to play is yourself and the strongest thing that you can play is mm -hmm. yourself, absolutely. It takes a while to get to that. It does. To, so to what's coming up for you? Well, I just, uh, let, let me just back up one week. Sure. I just spent uh, a few days in Columbus, Ohio with the Byron Stripling Quartet. We had recorded a new CD last summer and the fed, really world famous engineer Joel Moss had uh, engineered this CD and it was our CD release and we played a concert called Swinging in the New Year at the Lincoln Theater to a sold out house and so uh, that that was a thrill and signed CDs after the concert for about 45 minutes and working with uh, that quartet has been a thrill I'll continue to do that uh, I work with a trio called Trio East with Clay Jenkins and Jeff Campbell on bass so it's and pianoless or it's pianoless cordless, trio. you might say it is cordless uh, our last CD. Of course, are still there, of course. Right. Oh, of course, they have to be. Our last CD was done a year ago called For the Love, and it, it included uh, LA guitarist Larry Kuntz mm -hmm. and a uh, great pianist, a great uh, colleague of mine for the last 20 years, Harold Danko on <laughs> piano. Yeah. So uh, we're, we continue to book that, and, and I've got bookings with Byron's Quartet that I'll be doing, and of course teaching at Eastman and playing concerts Great. that roll through town. And teaching kids. All right. Well, thanks for doing my show. Uh, I don't often have the chance to do them in person, but I do Skype some, and maybe we can do another one sometime. Hey, I'd love to do it. If you Thank you. So kind. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Rich. All right, Michael. This is your host, Michael Bosbein, and I want to thank our friends at Atlanta Pro Percussion, Danette Classic Drums, Sabian Cymbals, and Classic Drummer Magazine. We'll see you again in two weeks.